Today we're going to be showing off this really fun infinite sacrifice life gain combo loop uh, that can destroy our, our opponents in a few different ways. Let's break it down and go through the deck list. Welcome back to the channel. We're breaking down the deck list now for this infinite life gain sacrifice loop combo deck. Um, that uses a few cards from Ixalan, which are really, really cool. So first of all, we're using Amalia. Whenever we gain life, we get to explore, which is putting a non-land into the graveyard or leaving it on top of the library, putting a plus one counter on Amalia um, and potentially getting to a 20 power to destroy all other creatures or just drawing a land or putting a land into our hand, technically not drawing it. Either way, different things we can do with explore with Amalia. And then we also have Bartolome El Presidio, something along those lines, uh, another creature that has a very, very important ability for this combo to work, which is sacrificing another creature without any mana cost and doing that at instant speed. We also get to put a plus one, plus one counter on Bartolome as well, which is really useful. The way the main combo works is using this old card from um, Dominaria, Danitha Banalia's Hope, a legendary creature. When Danitha enters the battlefield, we can put an aura or equipment card from our hand or graveyard onto the battlefield attached to Danitha. The only aura we use here is Necrogen Communion, which uh, says when the creature dies, you return that card, the creature, to the battlefield under your control. So we play out Danitha, we attach Communion, Danitha dies, Communion comes back. Danitha can die again. So we can sacrifice Danitha over and over again. The way this wins us the game is either having infinite life gain with something like Lunark Veteran. We can just gain like 50 life whenever we want. The opponent's probably going to give up. Um, we can drain the opponent out infinitely using Ellis Ill Core. Whenever one of our creatures dies, they lose a life. So we only have to do that about 20 times and they're dead. Or we can have Voice of the Blessed. If we have the infinite life gain, we can potentially have an infinitely growing Voice of the Blessed to get an absolutely massive Flying Vigilance Indestructible Creature. Or if we have a Malia and we have a non-land on top of our library, we can leave it there, gain a plus one counter every time we sacrifice a creature, gain one life. Then Amalia gets to 20, destroys all other creatures, so we can hit for 20. Um, and yeah, one of those can do. Oh, the other one we can do is we can attack with Bartolome, the opponent decides to not block, because it's only a 2-1. And then we sacrifice Danitha over and over again, get plus one counters on Bartolome to get to um, 20, or whatever we need to get to, when the opponent has already decided not to block. And we get to boost that power. So there's lots of different ways that can work. In the deck, we also have Phyrexian Missionary as another lifelink enabler, and potentially something that can bring a creature from the graveyard back to our hand if something important dies. We have the Deep Cavern Bat, which is a great way of getting rid of your opponent's instant speed removal so they can't kill Danitha when you're doing your sacrifice loop. Plus it's life gain and it's a cheap creature, so a really good one from Ixalan. And we've got Dead Weight as a removal spell. We could have something like Cut Down, which there's nothing wrong with that, but because we have Sarah Paragon, we can do dead weight twice because we can enchant something, it dies, this goes to our graveyard. Then if we have Sarah Paragon out, we can enchant something else with dead weight. That dies, we then gain life because that permanent left the battlefield and got an extra two life and we've killed two creatures with it. So that's really cool. We've got Bitter Triumph to um, destroy something. We can throw something in our graveyard if we want to, but we normally have three life that we can spend because we're gaining lots of life. And we have Diabolic Intent, which is basically just there to help us find Danitha if we haven't found her. I think it's her already. It might be him. Uh, so yeah, that's basically it. Or if we need to find one other piece. Say we have Danitha and Necrogen that we just need to find Bartolome. Then that's what we use Diabolic Intent for. Uh, the land's relatively cheap for um, compared to some other decks. We do have two copies of each of Igan Iganjo and Takanuma because we have... Uh, three different legendary creatures. Four. We have Elisil Core, Amalia, Bartolome, and Danitha. They're all legendary. So that can really discount the channel ability 
or Iganjo and Takanuma. And Takanuma can also bring back a creature from the graveyard to our hand. We have something important that has died. And then we also have these Scoured Barons for life gain. And the Obscura Storefront also for life gain to fetch basic planes and swamps. But also when we have Sarah Paragon, the Obscura Storefront go to the graveyard. We can cast it again, gain life for casting it. The sacrifices, we gain two more life. There's lots of ways to gain life with that. We could have other things like Resplendent Angel in here. We could have other ways of gaining life. We could have uh, the Gumdrop Poisoner. We could have Shield Red. There's lots of things we could add to this kind of deck. I'm trying to keep it as neat and tidy as possible without how all these extra things that kind of are different game plans. So we have a few different ways to win with this as it is. And we're using some new cards. So it feels pretty fun as it is. So we're going to do some games with this deck. See how will we do. See which win comms we can get. I haven't done the games yet. This is not like recorded after the games. So I don't know how we're going to do. We're going to see what we can get with infinite life gain. Maybe a voice of the blessed. Infinite draining with LSL core. Getting a Malia to 20 perhaps. Or a secret sneaky attack with Bartolome. We will see what happens. Or actually the opponent might just scoop when they know they can't kill Denitha if they don't have exile effects. That also happens sometimes. So we'll see which ones we get now. And yes, let's get on with the games. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you want any future videos like this. Okay, here we go. Hey, okay, right. Opponent's going first. We get the Deep Cavern Bat on turn two, though. Or the Dead Weight if we need that. And we're going with humans. And this doesn't have wards, does it? I'm actually going to go with. Dead weight on turn one, because that one grows with some pain. Which means we can't do deep cavern battle on turn two. But that's fine. Maybe growing fast though. We've got another warden. Growing instead of attacking. Scary. Okay. Let's get our second white source. And then. 2 3 life link's pretty good, or it doesn't block that one. Um, I think we're going to go with the bat. Then we can do a Malia and then grow it by attacking with the bat. Um, Thalia's no good. We've already got one, so now they've got basically nothing they can do. And they can hit me for seven, eight. The land would be really nice right now. Okay, never mind. Uh, let's go with Amalia. Attack, gain a life. Land would be nice. No voice of the blessed. It's like, okay. Land would be better. They've given up because we're going to grow again next turn and get out of range. But they could grow as well. Interesting choice, but I'm not going to complain. Oh, you're right. We have a bat. We have Paragon, which is pretty useful. We have a Malia. So I think we're going to go with the bat first. Check out their hands, see what they've got. They have zombies. Now that's a new one. Are they zombies? Wow, okay, some good zombies. Bursary. Scab, Headless Rider, Arch Ghoul. Uh, they only have two mana, though. So. Oh, what should we take out? Does it really matter? Uh, gonna make loads of extra zombies. Well. To be honest, it probably doesn't make that much difference which one we take there. Maybe you could take the Death Touch one. They're more likely to use it, like, this turn. The only reason to take that is because it gets more value later on. But they'll probably get desperate and use it anyway. And now, so, if we go with Amalia, because Amalia grows, we're going to attack with the bat. 
And we're going to get a veteran. Awkward mana because we need two white. We'll keep it on top. I guess taking the death touch would have made more sense. If we can outgrow their other creatures. Hmm. But they're going to have some kind of removal at some point. Okay, so... I'm going to go with the veteran. And, uh, might get white. Maybe get another bat. It's fine. I'm going to keep that. And let's say if they kill the bat... The bat. Maybe we'll beat them with toxic damage. Can't deal with flyers. I could have done that before combat, but I wanted to see if I was going to get the white. Cast, like, another creature to gain more life. Toxic is not really the point of the uh, deck, but five hits with a cavern bat would do it. So, multiple win conditions. It's nice to have extra ones, right? Okay, we're going to take this. So it's whenever this or another one dies, make a 2-2. Two, two. They'd make two because they have two headless riders. I take the damage because we gain life. We don't tend to need a lot very much. And let's go with the bat. Bellstinger. Exploit. Draw two cards, lose two life. And uh, let's just take out the death touch now. And we're going to explore. Missionary. There's nothing in the graveyard. Another creature. Kind of want more land. I don't know. Let's do this, see if we get some more land. I thought an Ellis would call. Um, let's just keep going. Just keep putting things in the graveyard till we get some land. Then we'll get a Paragon. Then we can start casting them from the graveyard anyway. Now let's just take the damage. Actually, no, we're going to block with a 6-6. Six, six. They need to have both the throat. They need to kill it. I have another one. They don't know that, but... Kill it. Ooh. They can sacrifice... One of those. Really? Not itself. I guess it's Death Touch. Some cards. Make some zombies. Make some zombies that get bigger. Well, not big enough. They do have a death touch one now. Oh, okay, that's more black land. Let's attack with the life linkers. Let's blow twice. Try and get another white land. I have all the content. Good. But, oh, no, this was a graveyard. Could get the combo that way, but to be honest, we could get the combo another way. Let's get out this one. Four again. Okay. We can return a creature to our hand. No, it's just not. We're very close to getting the combo. But we might win without it, so... I'll just take the win without the combo. We're gaining so much life, we can just take hits. Not from everything, but... The death touch, at least. I'm going to go wide. Okay. Well, they're going to go with everything. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> with everything. Everything, everything. Okay. Well, let's take out the death touch. Let's take out this one, because that makes loads of extra things, and let's just take out another 4-2. So we're still getting hit for uh, another 10 damage. So do I want to sacrifice something, put plus one counter? No, I don't. <laughs> Not very much damage, and we're taking out the best things. Now, we really want to cast Paragon... Can't do it right now, so let's just go with a storefront, get another white mana. 
Get the planes. Um, another bucket. Oh, let's just throw that in the graveyard. We're going to cast things with the Paragon anyway. Get a Phantom out to block with. Attack with two more life linkers. Got land. Got land. Perfect. As Arch Ghoul. There's quite a lot here, actually. A little bit scary. Add it up. I think I didn't kill me because I wasn't adding this up. Probably. Uh, okay. So we block the... F uh, death Touch. Not with that one. Can we block a 4. We're still taking 16. 20 damage. When you should have done the math and blocked first. Oops. So close. Getting greedy. Okay, we're going to mulligan because I don't want to have just uh, the wrong type of land. Okay, but we're going to keep only one necrogen, so that's easy. And then let's start with gaining a life. Next, we're going to do the bats, see what they've got. We have Likeness Looter, Undead Butler, Old Stick Fingers. Loads of land. Uh, let's take out the Likeness Looter. I'm going to make... Yeah, it's going to make all kinds of things. Okay. Let's land in the graveyard for now. Dead weight. Turn creature card from the graveyard to your hand. Do that. He's going to miss out on that. No other creatures in the graveyard. So loads of lands. But what do you do with it? Got stick fingers, and that's it. Okay. <clears throat> Need a 2 2. Alright, well, let's go with Dogrim. The land in the graveyard. Because next turn, play Paragon and get that land again. the damage. It's a damaged. Okay. And solve the loss. Okay, there it is. Right. So, big creature. Going through. Get some life. Another card. So, soul of a loss. We could take, well, we could block with Elisil Core, bring it back with the Paragon. So, the Communion makes our things indestructible, effectively, for a turn. Come straight back. So I don't really want to block with Elisil Core now. Okay, go that out. Okay. Comes a copy of creature card in the graveyard, mana value X. Not much there. Okay, autonomy. Well, what we do then is, well this grows, right? Um, Cards in graveyard. I'll just copy. Well, just take that now. 
means of life. That gets bigger, I know. We put the communion on the little corn now. I might as well take with the paragon. Damage coming through. So now we can block with Belgrim to kill souls of a loss, so they can't attack with that one for now. Gonna slow them down a bit. can put the other communion on um us. and then at the same point again the bat just do this the bat keeps gaining us life even though it can't take anything out of the hand because it's empty we can still push through damage Okay, so we're taking 444. Four, four. Uh, let's block stick fingers because it's going to get bigger. Okay, so we can do communion on oh, the still core again. We can keep attacking in that one life, and we've got a ganjo kill one of the taxidermists. And then a little core to block necromass. Can't block two turns they're dead, so kind of got to do everything they can right now. If I trample, okay. Something else becomes a three three, and you could choose anything other than that. Okay. <clears throat> well, that's just a three three. So I'm gonna kill this one, I guess. Oh, it's a 3-3. Three, three. I see. It's a 3-3. Three, three. Well, let's take that out now, then. We're taking lots of damage, though. Beneath her. Kind of what I need. Uh, 3, 4, 5, 6 damage. I'll get one more. Okay, so Denise is coming out. In life, get the necrogen on there, and let's, let's do this for now. Keep a little core back in case we need it to block. I have a feeling we might do. They're using all their mana for this. It means surely I have this. We're going to do 10 damage. I can block here. I can block this. If it comes back, not that it matters, because we're still not doing the loop yet. But we do still have indestructible Denitha. We have done the loop. One more mana, we could have done the loop. Ellis, Vanitha, and Bartolome. Done the drain loop. Well, they're all out of mana. Either a land in their hand, which they have no spells to cast, or it's a spell and they have no mana. So now's the time where they sit there and pretend they got disconnected. 
Hope that I quit out of being bored. Not going to work. Pretend to get disconnected. It's a perfectly reasonable way to play the game. Oh, there you go. We lost. We have Amalia, which is pretty useful. We have Anitha, we have Necrogen. We have lots of things we need. So, never know. We might be getting there. So let's go for a white. Do Amalia next. Of everything. Uh, okay, so yeah, Malia comes next. We have pretty much all colours happening. Let's gain some life. Do the explore thing. And let's get another white. And we're going to explore into. Diabolic Intent might even do this. Okay. So, um, I'm going to put Necrogen on. Am I? Yeah, I'm going to put Necrogen on Arnia. Because, I mean, they might have, like, Sunfall. They might have Payline Binding. There we go. Forces them to use it here. Isn't the worst thing ever. And that goes to the graveyard, which is fine. So come on, it's looking good. I mean, they're going to sun fall on turn five, aren't they? Um, okay, so... We kind of want Bartolome to be able to sacrifice. We need all these things. We don't need dead weight, but... I don't do anything about that. Um, okay, if this survives, we can use Diabolic Intent next turn. We still have to get more land. Ramping. Okay. okay. So many more land. Okay, let's go with this for now. Do it here. This is just a sacrifice combo. This isn't actually gaining anything yet. We have something that gains life, we need to have something that drains the opponent. Feeling they're just waiting to see what happens. Like with another ley another ley line binding in their hands, possibly. See what they do. Damage, okay. Um, we're not going to use dead weight anywhere else. Might as well put it on the stomper. In case they play a Zendikar, I want to flip it. They're just going for me. The 2 2. Depopulate, that's why. Okay, well, at least we draw a card. And uh, that's pretty good. We get the bat. Let's see what else they've got. Just our plan accordingly. Depopulate and herd migration. Ooh, herd migration is going to be annoying. Depopulate is not a problem. Of course, they depopulate and get the herd migration back. But let's do Bartolome again. Then at least we draw a card if they do depopulate. Okay. And the stop. Let's take another card. Okay. Diabolic Intent. So we can do... Uh, don't want to do Denitha right now. Let's hold on. Do this. 
I don't have a looking tent. It's Sarah Paragon, that's what we need. So, we need Sarah Paragon. We need another land, right? Anitha, Sarah Paragon, or something else. And hope they don't get another depopulate in the meantime. Then, win. Herd migration, invasion. Okay, herd migration coming next turn. Okay. Most likely. Well, oh, let's get a combo win here. Oh, uh, it's not the land I wanted. But it will do. Cars will do Denisa. Don't give me counter spells. It's only holding up because of the herd migration. Not a leyline binding. Better not be a leyline binding. Uh, Necrogen. Right one. And let's get another white. I think it really matters now. So next turn. Do Sarah Paragon. Bring back Autonomy. We still need to bring back something else. We still need another life gain or drain. I mean, we can get infinite life this way. So that's fine. If they have um, uh, something else to remove things, like that. On the Denitha. Oh my goodness. Seriously. I have Necrogen in there, right? So we have another Denitha. What's the chances? Okay. So we need to survive a turn, which means we need to bring back. Let me. Um. What's on there? Voice of the Blessed. Should we go with that? Don't have enough mana to get Voice of the Blessed. Get Bottle of Me. That's what we have. Okay. We might still do it. Having drawn the other than Ether. So. Let's get. Sacrifice out there ready. And then, just need to survive one more turn. Snickling. Almost there. <laughs> oh, come on. In stalk. We'll draw another Leyline Binding, should be a nightmare. We'll depopulate. Don't have it. One of these. I want anything from the graveyard still. I don't think I do. It's okay if we use this to a um, Angel. Archangel. The Sunfall. Wow. Okay. Well, in that case, let's sacrifice some things. Oh, that goes to the... Goes exiled anyway, but it makes the um, Sunfall token smaller. <laughs> okay. They've drawn two more cards from that, so... a good chance they're going to have other Leyline Bindings or Sunfalls. Alice core, okay. So, Anitha, get your Necrogen. Then we just need to draw another Bartolome, or their Paragon, or anything else we can sacrifice to Diabolic Intent. <laughs> Drawing loads of cards. Any other exile removal, and we are stuffed. Or a million uh, beasts would do it as well.
Ooh, creature from the graveyard. Okay. Your hands. So, is this enough? Let's do it. I do it. Only two. A hand. They don't have instant removal, we might have it. So, we need Bartolome, right? And we can sacrifice repeatedly. How close was this? Any instant removal? Any ley line bindings? Are you sure? Let's see. Do the loop. Only eight times, and we win. Instant removal? They're looking for it. Any other ley line bindings? No ley line bindings. Okay, we didn't do the loop, but you know. And we're done with the games, and here we are back to have a look at the deck and kind of go over a quick review and talking about what we could change. Well, um, considering we have 22 lands in the deck, 22 lands, and we do have some that, like, kind of thin out the deck a bit, but effectively, you know, we have enough lands. Most of our things cost one or two, so you would think it would be enough. Um, I'd probably take out the dead weight. It's kind of nice having the... Um, being able to use it twice with Sarah Paragon, but that doesn't come up that often. So probably a bit more normal removal, like go for the throat, would be good in there. We've already got um, three copies of Bitter Triumph. Maybe just make it an extra copy of that as well. Um, yeah, we want to have more removal because the opponent just has things that we need to deal with. And we probably want more card draw. Amali is good. We can draw extra lands. But most of the time we're going to be adding plus one counters because we're going to have non-lands on the um uh have non-lands on top of our library so something like ashes welcome might be pretty good considering almost all of our creatures are mana value three or less and they can enter more than once so i think like the missionaries do we get to use them that often possibly not maybe take them out um, although they can return things to our hand, which is also pretty useful. Um, maybe just go with something like this. Draw a few extra cards, remove a few extra things. A couple of other little creatures are not going to be, uh, you know, influential in the game. They're not the ones that actually make us win with the loop. So I'd probably go with this as my final version of the, um, the standard version of this deck list. But I am going to make a budget version as well, and you'll find... The link to both of those in the description. The budget one will just have the absolute minimum number of rares and mythics in the deck. We're going to need two Denithas at the very least. Uh, we're going to need some um, Amalia being rare. Uh, these are uncommon. Uh, Voice of the Blessed is good as an extra win con, but isn't absolutely necessary. Ash's Welcome probably is. So yeah, I'll make a budget version. I'll put that in the description as well. So if you don't have these this number of rare wild cards, or if you don't have these cards, you can start with the budget version and upgrade to this one as you go. Now the win rate for this deck has been around 50%. I seem to do much better in testing than I did in the games uh, that I play today. So I'm going to cut out some of the really long games that I happen to eventually lose because it's just going to be like 20 minutes of top decking, not going anywhere, which is a bit of a pain and not very fun to watch. So just so you know, sometimes games do get cut from these videos. It isn't to make them look better than they are. It isn't to sh just to show all the wins. It is just to make the video as concise and entertaining as possible and informative and not just have like 20 or 30 minute long drawn out games where nothing much happens. Who wants to watch that? Um, so yeah, let me know what you think of this deck in the comments below. Um, if you've used anything like this, what you think of the combo, maybe if you have more lands and have more Danitha in here, uh, that might work out better. There's other things you could do with this, I guess. So let me know what you would change as well. It'd be interesting to find out. And don't forget, you can join my Patreon at patreon.com forward slash games called Dad MTG, other bonus content and cool stuff there and ask me questions whenever you want. And that's all we've got to say. So thanks for watching this video to the end. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next video.